So, I bought like a physical video game magazine. Uh, Which one? Edge? Yeah. Edge, really? Yeah. It's because of the Shenmue cover. Anyway. Yeah, it was because of the Shenmue <laughs> cover. And I read their fucking like 10 page spread on Shenmue. I feel so conflicted about that game because like, it's being made by Yu Suzuki. He's an old man. He hasn't made a game in forever. And his big hits, aside from Virtua Fighter, were Shenmue. And those are arguably some of the games that have aged the worst in the entire planet. This was like the bloody tip of open world games. And there is so many problems with them now. And I remember like they announced the Kickstarter for it. And I was like, <laughs> okay, you Suzuki. I've been asking for this for years. You've called my bluff. I'm going to invest. I know it's going to be a train wreck because there's no way this can turn out good. But you know the worst thing now? It's like, I read that article and I was like, but what if it's good? Did you see the new trailer? Yeah. But what if it's not good? Okay, Neve. Fair <laughs> point. Fair points. It's probably not going to be good. This yeah, is like but your what, Kingdom Hearts. It's it's not. It's completely different to Kingdom Hearts. It's completely different. John, I think you have to be realistic and be very, very pessimistic. No, I'm being I'm being realistic. I'm very, very pessimistic about this game. I don't think it can be good. But what if? But you... at the same time, just imagine if we can go back to a simpler age, one where things weren't so complicated and controllers were Dreamcast controllers. Maybe you should just move back to your parents and just play Shenmue. Oh, that's... that's Things are not working out with Michelle, like, at all. Oh <laughs> Let the past die, John. No, I... I the future's I, I, now. He's going to take a step back, but it's the right step. I just... Just back into your PJs and back to dial up. Guys, we can beat Landy. He killed his dad. Yeah, he killed his dad. I was going to say, who is that? And then I was you like, will hey. refer to him as Master Hiyazuki. Landy killed Master Hayazuki. I would love if they kill him in the opening five minutes and if you don't do it, it's just a cutscene. And then the story is about something else totally. That's not funny at all, Neve. That's really mean. <laughs> That's a really awful thing to say. I really hope there's a bit where Rio, is that his name? He has to climb up like water towers and then it unlocks like, you know, more stuff on the map. And he's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of how he talks. <laughs> and then he gets in a forklift, and the guy's like, My back is killing me. I need you to do my forklifting. Can you forklift these four crates of fish? The forklifting was really important. Three it crates was, of oranges. It, it simulated having a job in real life. And then there's like another guy, and he's like, Hey, I need you to uh, collect all these Gashapon figures of the crazy taxi characters. Shenmu. One and two were chapters one and two in a 19 chapter story. And that's what's so exciting about three. We're finally getting the third chapter. We're nearly a sixth of the way through. I hope chapters four through 19 are just a graphic novel or an audiobook like read by Yu Suzuki. No, I'm telling you, and Shenmue's coming crying. back. Shenmue's coming back. Do you think he has the sense to end it in this one? Does he really <laughs> like, I'm going to do all 19? It's, you know it's what would have more questions and the, answers. Do you know what would genuinely be the funniest fucking thing in the world to me? If this also ends with Landy flying away on a helicopter, <laughs> just an indefinite hiatus for Shenmue again. I would love that. It's so other than Shenmue, what's in a physical magazine these days? Okay, I remember Edge feeling like a good, hearty magazine. Yeah. Like that was, those those pages were practically card. It does not feel like that anymore. Those are some flimsy pages. And um, I read a review of Apex Legends, a game I was already playing. It got an 8 out of 10. And then I looked at a review of Kingdom Hearts. It got a 6 out of 10. Oh dear. Yeah. Um, were there any ads in the magazine? There were so many fucking ads. For like what? Oh, like chairs. Like gaming chairs or just like, you know, couches? Like gaming chairs. And I think like just like lifestyle products, deodorant, stuff oh, like really? that. Yeah, yeah. Was it branded? 
like video game brand? Or no, or no, it was it? just hey. You smell. <laughs> <laughs> you've bought a gaming magazine in 2019. Everything's probably not all right. This can of deodorants will serve you. Was the you wanted yeah. to get a subscription to like PlayStation magazine or something? Like now? Yeah, just to see. And I was like, maybe all the good writing is secretly happening there. It's not, is it? No, <laughs> no, it's game it's, magazine it's, writing. It's just consumer re- reviews and shit like that. Uh, yeah. Pretty, pretty. Like they, they are doing a lot of features. Like they have the making of Fable in it. I think. Do they have an interview with Peter Molyneux? Probably not. I don't think he's allowed to do interviews anymore. Does that guy like even exist anymore? Yeah, what's going on with Peter Molyneux? Did he go to jail? <laughs> Seems like he should go to jail for something. I, I actually found myself thinking about curiosity today. Was that the tapping to the center of the thing? Yeah. That was a bad game. It's a bad game. <laughs> bad game. Did he go into hiding after curiosity? <laughs> what was there? No, because because afterwards, the person who won curiosity, that cube tapping game from 2013, 2012, 2013, the winner of that ended up becoming the god of Proteus. Or no no sorry, sorry, not not not, not Proteus. But the but the game made by Twenty Two Cans, oh, whatever it was the called. studio yeah. that was like a fucking like god sim game. Yeah, and uh, apparently uh, that didn't mean a whole lot. Yeah, and, and apparently Peter knew, Peter Molyneux rang up the guy and he said, "You're going to become a very wealthy man." And he got invited to Twenty Two Cans a week later. He had a meeting and they drew some stuff up on a whiteboard. Then a couple months later, he got invited back, and then that was it. And the game came out. He played it. He was like, "Oh, I, I could see they they took that suggestion on board and." He never got any money. And I don't know the name of this game because that's how fucking valid it is. And there's no way to find out. None. Oh, none. No, someone is screaming us the name and maybe you should be screaming something different. Uh, that's. I got something to say to that person. Shh, 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 shh. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> We're never going to say it. <laughs> oh, I'd be pretty I'd be pretty pumped if Peter Mullen, you listen to this podcast. Think you, you think he does? He Could, might. Because I, I, sometimes I think Hideo Kojima might... Who would win the fight, Peter Molyneux or David Cage? David Cage has a lot of latent, violent rage in him, and I yeah. don't think Peter Molyneux does. Okay, so yeah, Peter Molyneux will cower. Yeah, there would be like a physical fight, and then there'd be this other one where they're just dissing at each other from across a like a stage. Oh, Peter would win that. Yeah, one. Peter would destroy him in that. I don't think they. I, I don't think David Cage would do very well. He, no. Words are not his friend. <laughs> Welcome to the Let's Fight a Boss video game podcast. The world's strongest video game podcast. I am sitting here with two of the greatest game designers known to man. To my left, inventor of the smash hit Tree Simulator 4. He didn't actually work on Tree Simulator 1, 2, or 3. Please stop emailing us about it. It's Brian. One out of my 10 Kickstarter rewards has been delivered. Please be patient. To my right, the maker of Bloodborne. It's Neve. It came to me in a dream. A hunter's dream. I made it. (laughs) That's what I was waiting for. (laughs) It was right there. You didn't make Bloodborne. Brian, she she made Bloodborne. Yeah. You made Tree Simulator 4, Neve made Bloodborne. <laughs> what's wrong? I don't think that's what happened. That's why you like it so much. Neve, what's the name of the doll from Bloodborne? Mary. How do you prove how do you prove the virgin? How do you disprove that, Brian? It's all a Catholic kind of <laughs> <laughs> It's like a Catholic, I guess so. It's it's got it's got some it's church shit in there. Yeah. It's as Catholic as the Bible. And who are you? Uh with you always, I am your host. We whisper that name. What? What? What is it? John. My name's John. It's Paul. Everyone. It's Paul. Oh God, damn it! Fucking the amount of times I'm streaming and some fucking archaic garbage from like th- two years ago that I said offhand comes back up in the chat, and it's like, uh, yeah, I see you listen to the podcast. So you're keeping fucking receipts on me. Yep. If you make Twitch emojis, you need to make a little jar of jam so people can. Sp- <laughs> <laughs> What's yours gonna be, Neve? Some fucking milk? Milk! Totally! Yeah. Little slush and milk carton. What's mine? 
just nothing because there's nothing there. <laughs> yeah, you haven't associated the food, but you would like to. No, really Supermax. Super Brian's, Brian's yeah, very Super careful. I, do, you know, do you know what I had for dinner earlier on? Supermax? Yeah. Wow. Because I didn't want to make dinner tonight because we were recording and I didn't want to fucking put on food and do the wash up. We can't so. really sell Supermax, so what about like, what about Kiwis? There, you went to Kiwis? Mm, they're fine. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I like grapes <laughs> more. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what foods Brian likes, and Brian doesn't like food. No, I... Brian likes brands of food. Yeah, yeah. Pepsi Max, <laughs> R- Chili Heat Wave Doritos. We can't really use all this branded content. Yeah, we're, I'm also going to have to censor everything you're saying because, yeah. like, that's. That's yeah, way better. I think it's thing. way funnier if it's censored because people are like, what the fuck is it? Oh, man, that is true, though. I remember I got a demo for that game. If anyone remember this, Kingpin. It was like a gangster first-person shooter game for the PC, and the demo was censored, but it was the bleeping was like a little too high-pitched, so it'd be like, I'm gonna rout you up! <laughs> and it was so funny, and then me and my like <laughs> me and like me and my cousin eventually got the full game, and we were like, it's not the same. Cause it didn't have like the shitty bleeping in it. <laughs> it sounds like a weird high pitched fart. It was, and it was so good because some characters were so foul mouthed that I just be like, ah, 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 and then I'll. Ah. <laughs> it was good. Um, Neve, you have experienced media. It says here. <laughs> I didn't put anything down because all I've been doing is catching up on what you guys have talked about before. So I'm kind of midway through True Detective. Okay. Oh, how's that going? Uh, Season three. Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm enjoying it. It's very slow. It's a very slow season. Oh, yep. Glacial. Like, and at the start, I was kind of like, I don't mind that this is slow because the mystery is interesting. And then for maybe midway through episode three it stopped kind of progressing that mystery nearly and it becomes interpersonal stuff and that stuff is kind of glacial right now i think Um, it was the interpersonal stuff i was kind of there for for a lot of it yeah i really like the character but i was also into the mystery and i I finished it well i kind of finished it you're not feeling it by now your chances of like getting into it are pretty low i've heard a few people say by chat like by episode five it kind of ramps into the more mystery stuff again yeah yeah like the uh the 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 the, 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 uh, thing i got with him and his wife is they should not be together yeah they do not have a successful relationship but they stick with each other because they they have this some like loyalty thing but like it's Uh, not a i think they both see that they could be really great together and i think that's what disappointed me about it because they were like two really smart people who you wanted to see come together and just really support each other's cleverness but then like he gets more isolated from her the closer he is to her in the relationship for some reason i I don't know i thought there was like like a kind of warmth between them that I did like and it was frayed with all this other shit mm. but I, I did I was kind of invested in them like I wanted them to be okay there's moments when they do come back to each other like I think the kids get them to say that they love each other and then they kind of come together I, I don't I, uh, I'm i all over the place with it because it has moments that I'm really on board with but a lot of the time I feel like I've picked up my phone you know yeah. oh yeah I think that is a huge atmosphere show mm-hmm. if you're not feeling that atmosphere i would find it very hard to stay invested because that atmosphere that kind of like bleak everything is awful i love that but i love that too i feed off that shit like i'm a human vampire <laughs> so i thought i'd be really into it okay let's <laughs> let's no hang on shut up Neve. let's <laughs> let's wind up wind, wind back for a second please explain human vampire you know when you just kind of like misery stuff and you kind of feed off like misery media oh yeah like I, I love that shit. I think I I'm a human vampire. Yeah. Okay, so a human vampire is different to a regular vampire because yeah. they're human. Yeah, they're just like a media vampire. <laughs> but they just listen to Nine Inch Nails. So a regular yeah, vampire listens to Nine Inch Nails and sucks blood. So a human vampire is a media vampire. Yeah. Okay. You know, you see, you search out stuff that you're like, oh man, this is gonna make me feel awful. Oh, it's and then you so watch good. It. I could do that for a while, but then I gotta. I got, no, I got Brian, to... you need happiness. Happiness is what makes you run, mm-hmm. my friend. Yep. Speaking of which, Brian, you've been watching. I can't say this name. That's too vulgar. 
It's Pen 15. Oh, Pen 15, okay. Um, I haven't finished it yet because I'm really, really enjoying it. And I don't want to finish it because then it, I won't be able to watch new episodes. Is that really sad? No, I no. always do that. I like the last episode or mission of a game. Sometimes I don't play it because then it's like, then it never ends. Yeah, I'm like know? savoring it. I've done that with so many anime. I get to the end of it and I never watch the final episode. Yeah, yeah. Brian, Pen15. Uh, Pen15 is about two 13-year-old girls in the year 2000 trying to figure themselves out. Um, I checked out this show because it was recommended based on liking shows such as Broad City and Nirvana the Band the Show where it has two leads who are best friends and they're playing kind of exaggerated fictionalized versions of themselves as younger people is kind of how I would pitch it I guess um, but yeah it's just a show about two 13 year old girls um, but I guess the catch is, is that they're played by 31 year old women in, so in amazing hair and makeup and sometimes you can totally buy them as kids. Yeah, and then some, And then sometimes, like, the lighting will hit them in a certain way. You'll be like, oh, oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, with Maya, I find her super convincing as a 13-year-old. Completely. Uh, the only time she's not is when she's really doing, like, comedy bits and nailing it. Yeah. Oh, God, some of the fucking faces she makes. Oh, God, so, yeah. But then, like, Anna, because she's, like, way taller, but then that kind of works because, like, when you're 13, there's always that one girl who who, like... Who who, who, who who had like a growth spurt too early and is way taller than everyone else mm-hmm. and so she just she's kind of gangly and awkward I think that totally works as well um, and the fact that they have like train track braces and they have the like weird fringes and the, the, like the fucking clothes and the set design is so convincing their clothes make me so sad sometimes because they look so bad but they're so authentic I would love all the t-shirts the boys wear there's one boy, and every episode he's wearing a different wrestling t-shirt. Yeah. And that's cool, but they're specifically wrestling t-shirts from that era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really like how in the first episode, there's two guys, and one guy's a corn t-shirt, another guy's a Slipknot t-shirt. But then Maya's brother, he wears Wu-Tang Clan t-shirts, but it's a different Wu-Tang Clan t-shirt every episode as well. So, like, he obviously likes Wu-Tang Clan, yeah. and he has a, a whole wardrobe of it. Um, when I saw Maya do the Ace Ventura impression in the first episode because I didn't know you were watching it I was like I can't wait to tell Brian about this show like the show is very funny but then there's stuff where it tackles like honest early teen experiences that shows like Malcolm in the Middle kind of like hover on and kind of like talk in a subtext way Malcolm in the Middle was too like PG for a lot of this stuff yeah so like I guess the third episode is about masturbation yeah and they openly discuss it and it's one of the girls discovers masturbation and spends the entire weekend doing it yep and she's exhausted you'd love me there's like a close up of like a pulsing vagina <laughs> but like it's no, okay. no and, and, and I really really like the stuff where like they're playing with toys and then like someone oh, goes so, so and, and people are like you can't play with toys that's what kids do and it's like but we like playing with toys and it's like no you're meant to like boys now and so they want to like boys. They don't know how to like boys. Yeah. So they say the stupidest shit. Yeah. They're like, well, oh, that guy's so fucking hot. And they don't, they don't know why they're saying it. It's just other people are saying it. Yeah. But like, they ob- obviously just want to play Sylvania Families or My Little Pony. It's the good shit right there. Yeah. I, I always never. thought Sylvania Families were rad. Um, but then there's episodes where like, they find a cigarette or they start drinking or doing mild drugs that are just computer cleaner huffing computer cleaner oh um, I think you'd probably really like it Neve. and and because they're both adult actors they can kind of get away with doing certain shit but they work with child actors but the child actors are so well cast as well like did you did you watch the fashion show episode not yet there's one girl and she's so fucking mean but she's obviously like just a 13 year old girl but she's so good at like playing that role yeah. of just being so nasty and condescending but in a nice way um, they really, really do capture that kind of, or people passing notes to each other, going, "Do you like me? Tick yes or tick no." Just that sort of, like backstabbing. Did you ever see people do that? Shit. In although, yeah, we weren't. Were you guys in mixed secondary schools or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I was in a I was in all boys secondary school. And how and and 
and how in the first episode they have the thing where there's like an ugly girl each year that's so awful it's so so fucking nasty and so there is like comedy but then there's these really really like like stuff you've blocked out from your childhood rushing back to you oh there's you you watch the show and something will happen and you'll be like oh that's close to the bone yeah there's one episode where they find a thong and they and it has magical powers that makes them feel empowered and so they switch it every day oh no and then, but there's this whole bit where she's watching it but they're playing like holy music and she's like letting it drip onto her face because it's like a sacred item and then it ends up becoming this whole thing that you know they didn't need it in the first place and it's who they are that defines them but the fact that they <laughs> use this fucking ping pong as a way to like explain it is just so fucking stupid and funny yeah it's 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 a good show yeah I really like that. I really like the idea of adults playing kids. They did it in Wet Hot American Summer as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Good, good, yeah. It's funny now. Yeah. Um, I just... They're so convincing at playing them, too. Yeah, they're, they're really, really they're good. They're playing people that they're, like, well over double the age of as well. It's crazy. Um, kind of on the opposite end of that, I have been watching Riverdale. Why? Yeah, why? Well... Because of Sabrina? A little bit, but Michelle just, she loves Netflix original trash and she'll watch a lot of it. So I will end up consuming secondhand trash through her. And I started watching Riverdale and it's become one of my favorite shows. What? (laughs) Why? Because it is the stupidest goddamn shit I have ever ever seen in my life here's how stupid i think riverdale is i think if i wrote a tv show it would end up exactly like riverdale it's pretty stupid yeah (laughs) but i swear to god right we're on the third season there's like five different street gangs one of them's one of them's a cult one of them is a group of boys that are addicted to playing dungeons and dragons one of them is a bunch of bikers one of them is like ghosts they're called ghoulies and this is all portrayed as real there's a character in the third season called the gargoyle king and are these just attractive teenagers or oh they're all very attractive teenagers and this is the show Why is he called the gargoyle king oh well he's like he's like a 10 foot tall monster that like walks around riverdale at night and, and this is the there's show there's a forest where gay dudes just run around in circles and hook up that's <laughs> okay, but like, be safe. There's uh, and the, then the forest is next to a nunnery where psychotic nuns live. All, all true. This is the show with Archie and like Joe. Yes. Yeah, like, what is it about? I thought is it about like being? In, are they investigating the? The honest answer groups? to your question, Eve, is fucking nothing. <laughs> the first ep- the first season is like a murder mystery. I don't remember the second season because you don't remember this show. You just It's just something that you Experience. bathe in for a minute and move on. And none of the characters are likable. They're all the shittiest teenagers. And their clothes are not great. Like, they could do better. And, the, 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 and, and like, it takes place in, like, a weird mid-century. This is the thing, though. It takes place kind of... I wouldn't say weird mid mid century, but like kind of a bit of a day live kind of thing, or, do, do or people, not day live. Um, it follows. Do people have smartphones? They must do, but they don't. I can't remember an instance of seeing one. Okay. Like a lot of this, a lot of it is really inspired by like kind of seventies kind of stuff. Yeah. And so it's kind of seventies inspired, and it's all taking place in this weird little town that's infested with these different street gangs. Those that is kind of enough for me, as in I like that. And every third episode is like really well directed with like beautiful lighting and like really nice camera shots. The other episodes look like fucking garbage. But this has become like a ritual where every Sunday a new episode of Riverdale comes out and we sit down and we just have a whale of a time. Have you got like a dance? For when it comes on or anything? Brian, you're not allowed to tell people about my TV dances. Will, will, That's will you... personal. Okay, sorry. 
we'll just add that to our lore, I guess. Yep, you you fill in the blank. Um, can can we expect a why you should watch Riverdale? Absolutely, I guarantee you, I'm going to make that video. And I, you know, I don't want to get people's hopes up, but it might be coming sooner than you think. I also watched Mob Psycho season two. Whatever, it's pretty good. It's a good show. Nothing else to say about that. No, <laughs> I'm watching that. Sh- I'm watching it with Rebecca. Uh, I, 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 and I, I'm, I'm not like. I'm, I guess I'm kind of like you. I'm not watching it. I'm not sitting down watching it, but I'm catching every second episode or most of every other episode. Fucking cool. Oh yeah, like honestly, I think Mob Psycho season two is like. It is kind of that perfect season two where like there is enough shit from season one and the char- like the little characters you kind of fell in love with in season one they are there but they're kind of growing like everyone in that season is kind of advancing and growing and it's really nice because some of the ways people grow is like it's kind of sad like one of the big storylines in it is you know mob and reagan are two the two main characters and basically mob gets enough character development that he sort of realizes that reagan's full of shit and bad for him that's cool that's interesting and goes off and does his own thing when that happens you begin to see like what a kind of sad person Reagan is and it's they're such a good pair of episodes and like you feel like they've both really grown by the end of it but their relationship has grown as well like the way they treat each other is different and one's a hell of a writer and it's it's such a fantastic season it it looks brilliant and it's like I think that's probably the most interesting thing happening in anime right now for me is, is One Punch Man season 2 coming out this year? Yes, but they've moved it to a different studio, and the initial trailers are very concerning. Okay, so they might just be writing the coattails of season one. They might be. Sure would be a shame. Yeah, it would be. Someone call me for that. Let's just see. Let's just see. I hope it's good. I really hope One Punch Man season two is good. Yeah, that first season is one of my favorite seasons of anime ever, and God, I hope it's good. Let's say we move into our strategy talk. Neve, ape out. You kind of think Hotline Miami, it's kind of top down, smash them up where you, as a gorilla, you've escaped confinement and you're making your way through through levels. Mm-hmm. The style is extremely graphic design. Yeah, it looks like solid native. bass. Yeah. yeah, at any point there'll be like three colors on screen. Yeah, completely. And it's all boiling animation. So like boiling animation is like repeat frames and it really has a lovely feel to it so when you go into an area they're all very visually distinct with color and stuff but like in a way that really paints the picture where you are and what's happening like the lights will go out and like uh, the torch from an enemy will be like this nice brush stroke kind of style lighting and it's really cool um the sound plays really big into it as well because like you are burning through these levels crushing enemies and you have kind of three main ways to get through an en- get through a level. You have your movement, you have your push, and you have your grab. So you meet a little man, you can push him into a wall and he'll just splat. You can push him out a window, you can push him into another enemy. You can grab him and he will ha- they have guns. And you can use his one shot from the gun against another enemy and throw him against another one. So by grabbing one dude, you could at least take out three people with him. You make your way through. And the improv jazz comes in when you smash them. It's a cymbal crash that kind of builds with the kind of rhythmic undertones of each level. And when you get 50% through a level, you'll get kind of a side A finished. And I really like those title cards. Yeah, they're uh, fun. They're really, really like, it's a jazz game. And I really like the, the kind of commitment to that image. So much so that when you finish a level, it's displayed as a vinyl album cover and you can kind of reselect your levels to go through. Um, yeah, 15 euro on the Switch. Kind of a great purchase. You've been playing it, John? I have. Um, I would say I'm not as into it. What? Really? What? Yeah, I don't think there's anything to the gameplay. <gasps> but smashing the men, they make the That's fun. Noise. Smashing the men is yeah. fun, but... John also doesn't like jazz. I hate jazz. What? This game is not for you. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> um, like I like I like the smashing men. That's fun. 
but I do it and then every time I do it after that it feels exactly the same to me it kind of it keeps uh, changing up in the sense that you'll get to a part in it and then the lights go out and it'll be a bit more difficult to get them in then when you're through the first containment area you get to a 30 flight um, I just got to there yeah they, they have snipers now they have shotgun users and they have like a machine gun user so you can grab a guy who's a machine gun and you can feasibly kill about five people with him if you does it get more difficult uh i think it's kind of designed to you try and beat your own time like you'll get through it you kind of just brute force your way through it just go you kind of run through it really fast and if you watch a really good let's player it kind of makes a jazz album oh that's cool so yeah because you're not repeating it over and you're just yeah. hearing the music i think it's a really cool game i think it's 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 not for me like I'll probably play it maybe once or twice more and then I think I'm kind of done but I really admire its commitment to its own aesthetic like both the Sol Bass art and like the jazz stuff this is I'm sure someone out there is heroin yeah for sure like I saw another little indie game that had improv jazz as a mechanic as well we're doing damage deals a note and I thought that was a, a cool thing that people are leaning into a little bit but um, if you like music, and you like graphic design, and you like gorillas getting their revenge, <laughs> then this might be a little indie game for you. Yeah. I think my problem with improv jazz was I already was just fundamentally not cool with it. And then I watched La La Land. La La Land isn't jazz. La La Land is like some... There's a bit in La La Land where fucking... What's his name, Brian? Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Ryan Gosling explains improv jazz, and it makes me want to shoot myself to john legend i think yeah but that's that's why la la land is just an atrocious film it's just like you know white people probably invented jazz <laughs> the movie. like i like whiplash because it's just about white people oh, like whiplash is ruining fantastic. jazz <laughs> yeah but then like that's such a good take on <laughs> they're just shitting all over jazz but then like in fucking la la land they're, they're just trying to claim it back as if like they started it. I thought Pen15, there was like a bit where it was getting whiplashy. You know the bit? Where he's like, slower, faster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking jazz. Fucking jazz. Little new metal, that's what I like. <laughs> so I... every time you smash, it's like, I know some rap metal happens. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so here, okay. So my game is you play as a teenage boy. Okay. And you're in the city center. And it's basically that place in Dublin with all the stoops. Okay. Central and the, Bank. Yeah, okay, yeah. so Central Bank. And so it's about you trying to make it to the top step of Central Bank where the coolest fucking moshers hang out. But like, it's it's like half JRPG, or RPG, I guess, and half rhythm game in which you have to earn their respect. And like every step, a new layer to the song comes in. Yeah. And on the last one, it's John Davis speaking tongues. And like, you get things where it's like, you have acquired a new chain for your fucking baggy jeans. <laughs> But this chain gives you, like, two defense, so it's really, really good. You know what? That is just... Uh, the world ends with you. Yeah. <laughs> that is that game. That fucking game. That fucking... God, I want to like that game. Yeah, me too. I want to like it so bad. Let us like you. Guys, I have a very quick update. I have a very quick update on Apex Legends. I got four kills on the one game. Nice. And, and we won. And I got the winning kill. All because of you, John. Well, no, I was with someone who was way better than me. That's a real gamer with the at symbol in it. Yeah. At gamer. That's me on Twitter. Got, got in there right and early and got it. And now 10 years later, fucking winning kill in Apex Legends, proving it. I actually felt bad because the guy, like, friend requested me afterwards. And I was like, oh, sweetie, that's the best I'm ever going to do. Like... Not, I will never do better than that in this game. In fact, I don't know if I'm still playing that game because nothing will ever beat that. But um, it was fun. Apex Legends is... That's a really good game. That's It's still fun. It's still cool. Yeah, that is that. Brian. Yeah. You completed Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I sure did. Um, this was a game I started playing back in January because um, the game is just over 20 years old. And I haven't really played it since I was a kid. Yeah. I played the 3DS version, but that is so optimized that it's a different experience. Same game, but it's a very, very different experience as to how 
stuff is kind of delivered to you and jumps are easier to make and puzzles are a lot easier to solve. Yeah, they've gone um, in and they've tweaked and kind of improved everything. They've stretched and shaved off edges of the geometry to make it more accessible. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, and I wanted to play the, you know, one-for-one one version of the N64 game. But I played it on the virtual console on the Wii U. Uh, I guess when I last spoke about it, I had just done the Child Link Dungeons, uh, which is tree dungeons, and they're all very linear, and they're all kind of very simple, straightforward dungeons. And then when you get to Adult Link, you put you pull out the the, the sword. What's the sword called? Master, Master sword. sword. The Master Sword. Got ourselves a fake gamer boy over here. Yeah, I guess I guess I'm not real. Mm-hmm. Better fuck my last episode, everyone. Everybody, Brian's last episode been with us for. 95 episodes uh hell of a run yeah hell of a run yeah just me and you and Eve. should we call this episode brian's last episode just, <laughs> just everyone's like, what? <laughs> oh i wanted to call it devil triggered that's way better Oh, and if you if you're listening to this episode and you just got to this bit and you realize you're not actually leaving and you were sad, we're really sorry, but you have to admit that was really funny. It was funny, and you know, haha, on you, you, you goober. That's what you get for getting emotionally invested in some fucking weird video game podcast. Yeah. Uh, speaking of getting emotionally invested, I think this game really holds up still. Um. <laughs> I honestly thought it was going to be like Donkey Kong 64 where I pl- uh, put my hands on it two decades later and I'm like, ugh, this is fucking, this plays like ass. This game is still like completely playable and like... It still has style, it still has grace. Yeah, this game is not a fucking disgrace. Um, so you you, uh, you uh, do the seven year time skip, your adult link, and you have five dungeons to do. Uh I wanted to see if I could do them out of order, and you completely can. You 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 have to do the first dungeon, the Forest Temple, to start off to trigger a cutscene. But when you get halfway through that dungeon, you get a bow and arrow, and once you have the bow and arrow, you can pretty much like leave that dungeon and do the next couple dungeons at your own pace. So I did them completely out of order, and it doesn't affect the game at all. Um, actually, I actually think my favorite parts of that game are when you meet Sheik every time and Sheik is the twist is it's Zelda in disguise as a ninja but the way Sheik talks is super cool because it's just in this kind of weird abstract poetic like verse where they're not really kind of like talking about anything specific but it's just kind of it's really really beautiful and the music that kind of backs it up is super convincing even though it's just like some fucking Are you smiling at Eve? Brian likes poetry <laughs> ah, Brian. It's really cute. It's just done real well. I consider poetry the same way I consider jazz. Just the world doesn't need it. Uh, I actually really like poetry. Yeah, poetry's great. I can't stand it. Um, I always got A's in my English, so I guess I like poetry. Just saying. <laughs> Is that the only reason? Yeah, I I, 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 I learned off my poems. Who's your that... favorite, po- favorite, favorite poet, Brian? Sylvia Plath. She's really good. What about you, Neve? Whenever she. I don't re- have favorites. Eve doesn't know any poems. I haven't read a single one. <laughs> so I guess the thing I really liked about Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Um, playing that game as an adult is super cool because I guess playing as a kid and the whole kid Link experience is super cool. But to like go back and play that game as an adult and it has this whole bit where you leave being a kid behind and you become an adult. That becomes way more relatable. The cool thing is you get to go back in time and be a kid That's to solve one or two. super interesting. Yeah, so like there, there are bits where you get to go back to being a kid. And so when I was playing the game, I was like, yeah, I, I am going back to being it. Like, <laughs> like, like, so you, you know when you play an old game, or I, I'm not sure if this happened to you guys, but that you play an old game and the things you were thinking about that were like, bothering you and the reason why you play video games a lot of time is to escape stuff or yeah. take your mind off stuff that's annoying you in real life I actually remembered stuff that was like pissing me off like 20 years ago really and I was like Brian what was pissing you off 20 years ago oh uh, just some kid who like was claiming something that wasn't true and I was getting way too upset over it okay Brian what we're gonna do is after this podcast 
We're going to take a bus down to Cork. Yeah. We're going to find that guy. We're going to kick his ass. Leave you in? Sure. I mean, may as well kick a stranger's ass. He's he, not a stranger. <laughs> okay. This guy, and I shit you not, and I was so fucking angry because it's definitely not true. Okay. He told me that when he was a baby, he went up Mount Everest in a buggy. He could have done I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe no, he could have like, not. Parents were super crusty and they tied the buggy to their back and buried him up. Uh, cancel the cancel the trip. We're not doing it anymore. This guy sounds legit. I I I I, 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 I said to this guy, I think his name was Kean. I said to him, "There's no way you went up Mount Everest in a buggy. Your parents wouldn't have pushed you up." And he was like, "I didn't. They didn't push me up. It was a buggy with a with a remote control, and I I pressed the button and it went up <laughs> itself. Obviously, I couldn't go because uh, I I was a baby and my legs didn't work. Yeah, obviously. but I went up Mount Everest in a buggy." Fair play to him, Jesus. And he told me this when I was like eight, and I was like, that's not true. I don't think I'd done anything when I was a baby. So yeah, stuff like that, where you're like, why do... Why? And I, I guess between that and Pen15, I'm getting a lot of, like, stuff I thought I'd moved on from that is still... I'm gonna need to ring some people up and call them on their shit. Yeah, no, I think that's the healthy thing to do. I'm a big fan of dragging up grudges from like many decades ago and just making people pay for them i really hope in like some youtube video you make that blows up there's just a bit at the end where it's like fuck you gareth oh there will be give me back my pokemon cards you fucking asshole let me see who wronged me who am i gonna get you know what kid took my phone once that's fucked up yeah it was it was really fucked up one time a kid dared me to pee in his sister's toys and Brian. Know, he can't back down from a dare. <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. And I got in trouble and I was like, well, he dared me and they were like, yeah, he's not getting in trouble. I got in so much fucking trouble. Yeah, you peed on him. Yeah, yeah, you, that's pretty bad. That's yeah. pretty bad now. What the hell? Yeah. I think the worst thing but I then, did... But then a couple of weeks later he got in way more trouble because he did something way worse than pee. What did he... <gasps> This kid just like defecating in other people's stuff. Was it his sister again? This, uh, uh, it, yeah. it was it was a cardboard box full of family photos. Guess what he used to wipe it with? Why? Because nine year old boys are not good at anything. I think that's like more than that. Yeah, I think that's a little there's something Yeah, something's wrong. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. So I got another video game. <laughs> Guys, I've been playing Devil May Cry 5. Um, and I wouldn't describe myself as like a huge Devil May Cry person. Um, I've really, I really, really liked that first game when it came out. It came out, I rented it, I beat the whole thing. Thought it was really, really cool. Like, just really different from a lot of stuff that was coming out that time. And um, I, I was saying this on a podcast recently, but I always remember watching the trailer for that game and it's like Dante and he's like in his red coat and you can see like you know his big massive sword of Sparta and he's walking up this like gothic church and like you're seeing all these like demons and it's like oh cool it's like you know it's kind of like Castlevania or like something like that and then he turns and he pulls out the two pistols and starts firing at the camera and it's like oh my god he has guns as well and Devil May Cry back then it was like a really good B movie video game like it played him it played really great for the time it was like the first instance of like you know a character action game but it had this really fun like attitude and it was just really cool and the biggest compliment i could give devil may cry 5 is devil may cry 5 feels like that feels like devil may cry 1 did back then does that make sense cuz like devil may cry 1 has not aged that well like you tried to get into it a little while year or two ago didn't you Brian I tried the HD collection and I just post Bayonetta it was it was tough yeah I, I think three holds up pretty well one not so much and it's just awesome seeing that style of game updated because like it is it is so much fun to play this game like I am kind of floored at the level of polish like I was not expecting something this good so close after Resident Evil Remake and it's using the same RE engine and it looks beautiful like it looks as good as Resident Evil remake 
it plays phenomenal. Like, it is so much fun playing this game. When I'm playing as Nero, like, you know, I'll, I'll be fighting a crowd of enemies and I'll run out of enemies and I'll be like, oh shit, is that the, is that the last one? Because I was just having, like, such a good time destroying them. And it, like, it's... It's one of these beautiful games where everything kind of comes together. It's not just the gameplay, it's not just the looks, it's not just the sound, it's everything and it all works together. So like when you're fighting and you're doing better and better and your style rank is getting higher, like new level, new um, layers of the song are adding in and like when you're doing really well and like the vocals and everything are going, it is just the coolest feeling and like the amount of stuff you can do in this game. You can like surfboard on a rocket or on a like propelled fist and fight enemies while you're surfing with skateboard controls. You can shoot a grapple arm and like pull people towards you. There's the new character V in it and he, the way he works is he cannot fight at all. He's a bad fighter, <laughs> but he controls a griff, a like kind of weird crow and a weird shadow crow and a shadow panther. And this crow is your square button and the panther is your triangle and so you're trying to keep away from the enemy while they do all the fighting and you're pulling off all the moves with them the combo potential with him is insane he's tricky to get the hang of but it's so cool because it's so different to Nero the main character and then I just unlocked Dante as well and he has a completely different playstyle as well and I I love this game it is so so good it's one of those ones where like I keep thinking about it when I'm not playing it and being like, oh, if I try this, will this work? And nine out of ten times it works, you know, that kind of way. Yeah. And um, it's fantastic. And just like the story is really fun. All the characters are really like fun and charming and stupid. Um, it's like V is like the kind of goth guy. He His bird has the exact personality of Iago from Aladdin. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, except he swears. And raps. All right. Yeah. And uh, I really like the new character in it, Nico. She's like the kind of trailer trash girl. You might have seen her in some of the trailers. She's really, really fun. And I didn't really know what to expect her from the trailers, but oh God, it's so good. Do you get to play as her? No, unfortunately. You don't play as any of the girls, which kind of sucks. Yeah. And ladies in it and stuff. Ladies in it and ladies like... She hasn't done much besides being just, like, very pretty. So that's it. But, um... It's a fantastic game. And, like, if you're kind of on the cusp with Devil May Cry... I'm like, if you're a fan of Devil May Cry, you probably own this game. But if you're on the cusp, like... Really, like, people should play this game. This is absolute contender for one of my favourites of the year. It's fucking fantastic. Capcom knocking out of the park. Yeah. yeah. They did, really have been. Did you watch the the video from Toko Toko TV or whatever they're called now? Archipel? Oh, did they change their name? Yeah, where they talk about the, the... Because Capcom have a main office in Osaka, but they developed Ori 2 and Devil May Cry, Devil May Cry 5 back-to-back, back, but on different floors using the same engine, like you were saying. But just how they were kind of sharing problem-solving with each other and how the two projects, the staff, would kind of overlap with each other. That's interesting because both the games have this, like, I would say, like, unreasonable polish to them. Like, yeah. both of them are just, sto- like, oh man, there's this thing that happens in DMC5 where you have to, like, call a call Nico and she'll bring, like, the upgrade truck along. They've animated separate cutscenes for each level where you call her up and she, like, gets to your location and they get wilder and wilder. Like... At first, you know, she'll just drive up. And then this one where, like, in this, like, like myst- this, like, Scooby-Doo mystery van, she, like, drives up through, like, concrete and destroys it and just appears there. And, like, they're having, they're having so much fun with it. And it is, it is, a, it's so good. It's so, so good. Would either of you consider playing this game? Uh, yeah, I'd definitely give it a go. Yeah, I've played all of them, so. Really? I will eventually play this one. I yeah. didn't know you played all of them. I'm kind of, like, a casual fan. Yeah. I think this is a really good game mm. for that because like I'm I'm no expert with Devil May Cry at all but even then like I feel really cool playing it like the the amount of options you have in in foot combat is just insane. Uh I'm kind of um 
March has kind of become a crazy month for games because Sekiro is out as well. So yeah. Gonna... Yeah, it's out next week. Yeah, and oh like we got it. We got to get everything out of the way for August. For Sh- Astral Chain. Shenmue Three. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, John. That's right. Yeah. All of us are fucking. <laughs> really? Shenmue. Oh my god. All of us are playing Astral Chain. It's pronounced like Shenmue, like it's just S H E N M U E. Astral Chain. No, no, go on. Could you could could, could you say it one more time? I know you know. Shenmue. So Shen. Shen. Mu. Mu. Astral Chain. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I think I'll check it out. Yeah. All right. Cool. Good stuff. Neve, tell us about Final Fantasy IX. Final Fantasy IX has just stayed looking amazing. Like those pre-rendered backgrounds are beautiful all the time. It starts with like the main character Zidane, who is like part of a theater company oh my also, god i forgot that yeah i forgot that aspect of it too but they're also like you know um thieves so they're theater thieves who have like an airship that is their stage and they're meant to perform for the queen and the the intro is just like it's just spectacular writing it goes from you playing as zidane to the other character vivi cross paths with three characters who four characters that will become part of your core party within like the first hour and it's they're all individual people no one's like started off together really apart from Garnet and um, Steiner and it's like there's all these like little intersections um, that you play through and eventually they come together in such a natural way that I was like this is just kind of superb setup writing even everything you've said so far about like the, the theater thieves has a crazy level of polish when you walk through a game uh, uh, area as a dane the npc's heads will follow you as you walk up oh down the deck. for a ps1 yeah. game do you know it's funny because like I, I was playing through the start of final fantasy 7 a while ago and that thing you're saying just about setup like hit me so hard where it's like bang you're off a train you're a mercenary the world's in trouble this is an avalanche crew this is an evil corporation has a weird president you like this girl this girl also exists and like in the first half an hour they just set up like this just seamless lovely story and i really feel like that's kind of been lost by a lot of rpgs now totally and like it, all the stakes are kind of laid there or at least the starting ones are really definitively clear and i keep thinking about like my experience with 15. like i did find out what was happening in 15's world eventually but i had to dig for it i really want to go back and play 8 because i liked 8 when i played it but since then i have only heard well like you know for the most part you just hear people talk shit about 8. i think that's a good video game I never knew there was 8 hate. I never knew that at all until like... I think really? 8 does some fucking weird, cool stuff. Yeah. I only knew one other person at the time I played it and they liked it too. So I never had this kind of broader people yeah, who same. didn't like it. There's a boss fight in 8 where you're fighting a giant weird queen and she has Renoa like in her chest. Stable her. Yeah. Yeah. I remember like that like like kind of getting to me in a weird way like it kind of it bothered me and i love that i love all the space witches you go into space in eight it's such a good game it's a fun time but at nine right now is on the switch it looks great zidane's a great character the whole cast of characters is honestly some of the strongest in the, in the series and the story is just it's 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 fun and some of the visuals and some of the writing is really touching and heartfelt um, I think every character you'll come across, you'll kind of come away knowing them really well and caring about them. Just thinking about the characters, Zidane, Garna, and Steiner, they're like the only really humanoid ones. Yeah, because then there's Vivi, Freya, Amarant, Quina. Yeah, I think they are the kind of... Oh, there's the girl with the eye patch, isn't there? Oh, Beatrix. Yeah. She doesn't really become... I think maybe you have to play her as her once or twice. I think, yeah, she, like, yeah. joins you from... She's... Beatrix is cool. She's my fave. Really, really good cast. I'm, I'm having a great time with it. And if you haven't played Final Fantasy IX, because I know a lot of people, this is their first time doing it, great decision. And if you haven't jumped on board, you should, because it's it's just... It's still really great. Yeah, I... I promise kinda, I will. Kind of convinced me to pick that up over the weekend. I kind of just... I don't want to switch. I want to play Final Fantasy Nine in bed. It's, that sounds like a great time. It, it's it got the optimized stuff as well because I'm watching Rebecca play it. You can fast forward through bits. Oh, nice. Or you 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 could turn off random battles if you just want to do story, 
and if you just want to grind then you can turn on the battles and have it at like 100 percent occurrence that's really cool uh, Final Fantasy IX as well has this like little system called active time events and these are like optional moments you can look in so when you're out in the world maybe Garnet and Vivi are doing something else so you can press one of the buttons and you'll just get a little snippet of what's happening to them in that current moment and it's a really good way to keep kind of your eyes on a very large cast of characters yeah you kind of see the aftermath of things and you see it from different perspectives i like that a lot because a problem i have with some jrpgs is do you ever feel like each one of your party members has a relationship with the main character but not each other yeah that drives me insane i don't like that i hate it there's it's mostly like that in persona 5 there's one or two bits where i think it's Anne and makoto talk to each other and those bits are rare, but they're good. But whenever they only exist to serve the protagonist, yeah, it's just like, do they not have a relationship with other... Like, yeah, it, it doesn't feel fleshed out. I'm going to start back to Persona 5 this week. You don't sound like you're having fun. Maybe. I'm not! You should just <laughs> but I'm to... 75 hours in! Yeah, that's enough. That's yeah. not enough! I'm so close. And then, once I, once I get through Persona 5, I can go back to Dragon. But I'm pretty sure everyone who's played five will tell you you can't. You're kind of over the really good bits of it. Yeah, just don't bother. I feel like I've been over the really good bits for about forty hours. Well, back to Dragon yeah. Quest. Dragon Quest is so much fun. But no, I have to beat this fucking game. Just play Final Fantasy Nine. You don't understand. I have to beat it before Shenmue Three comes out. Neve, that sounds awesome. Um. I have been playing a very strange little game called Anodyne. Anodyne is... It is described as a Link's Awakening tribute game. Okay. That is not what the game is at all, though, because it's a really fucking weird game. It is much closer... Imagine, like, say, Yume Nikki crossed with Link's Awakening. That's what this game feels like. It's like kind of Zelda pixel shit with like abject ex- like existential terror. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um I kind of wandered into the game in my last stream and um, not really knowing what it was, just thinking like, oh this will be fun to just turn on like we I'd already played like 2 hours of Devil May Cry and I wanted something to chill out to. And it was really fun, like, kind of figuring it out because, like, it has this really droning kind of soundtrack, like, really kind of upsetting. And you're walking around and it's like an adventure game. There's some stuff that's not right. Then all of a sudden you go to a pier and there's a guy, like, fishing. And, you know, it's like any Zelda game. The same button to talk to people is the same button you swipe your sword with. And so I go up and I try and talk to him, except rather than talk trigger, I swipe and it pushes him into the river and he drowns in a pool of his own blood. Oh dear. And I was like, wait, wh- what is happening? And I don't, I didn't play anymore because I kind of want to stream the rest of this game because it seems weird as fucking hell. But um, I was having a really fun time with it. And if you like really strange kind of atmospheric, nearly like on the cusp of being a horror game, this is one of those and it's anodyne you can play it on the switch i think it's like it's not expensive i think it's like between 10 and 13 bucks and i've I've had a great time with it so far i'll report back with with a thorough opinion later brian yeah you have been playing resident evil 2 the remake i have uh i've beaten both campaigns now i took me it's um i took me as advice and started as claire and that was a lot of fun. I really, really like the weapons. The kind of heavy damage gun that she has that shoots flare and acid rounds really, really helps you out in the early parts of that game. Um, I love the police station. I think that's such a well-designed area. I know it like the back of my hand now. And I love kind of unlocking more and more of it. And then when Mr. X shows up, you have all these different paths you can take. And you can kind of double back and collect everything you need. And the first time going through that, and it takes like three or four hours because you keep stopping and inspecting things mm. to just knowing exactly where you need to go and just breezing through it is such a satisfying feeling. Um, then you get to the sewers, 
not a big fan of that but then i really really like the nest where you have the underground laboratory really really enjoyed that section again the sewers suck they really do yeah they're not good they're not fun i think they're only like a room in the original yeah I, I, like I don't know I don't think the puzzle the kind of room puzzle aspect really carries over to the sewers and none of the characters want to be there how many sewers in games though yeah. like and the, do you know what I always think imagine being in the meeting room of a video game like and you're making a video game you're developing it and someone goes and then we should have a sewer level someone should veto that instantly just be like no no I, um, I, I really really like Mr. X I I, I I just think it's such a great addition that you learn off uh, an area of the house and or, or the police station and it's not a case that you get bored because you're being chased by this like unrelenting kind of uh, enemy that you can like stop for about 20 seconds but then he'll just reactivate and start chasing you again and I have this one particular area where I can't clear it out because it's got like three liquors and there's no way to like clear it out without alerting the other two and Mr. X so I have to like navigate my way around the police station where I don't go through that particular corridor. Mm. But I, I found that very fun as well. That 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 there's always like one or two solutions to a problem. Yeah. Um I've been playing more Resident Evil 2 since the last time we talked about it, and I think it's definitely like clicked with me much harder. And uh, I think like the thing the thing about it was like I realized that like if you're shooting at a zombie like, you kind of fucked up in most cases. Yeah, you're better off just mm. avoiding them or else yeah. taking yeah. the hit and then just moving on. Because mm. you can get bit three or four times by a zombie yeah. before you die. And that turned it into this weird kind of, like you are saying, like a puzzle box. Where, like, you're like, I know this is a zombie in this corridor. It's a tight corridor. I can't get by him. So I can go around this corridor where there's two car- two zombies, but it's looser. But maybe I should just spend the, like, ammo to get through the one. And it's it's really cool. Yeah. Um, what else was I going to say? The zombies are weird because, like, some you can kill with one headshot and then others take seven bullets to the head. Mm-hmm. So what that is, is that the game, like, adjusts the vitality of zombies in accordance with how well you're doing. Okay. So sometimes you have, like, if you have, like, loads of bullets, zombies are going to be really tough. If you have very few bullets zombies will die quicker and there's also other things like if you stop and the reticle gets smaller you have more chances um of getting a critical i really really do miss the suplexing and just having yeah like like, like you, you know you know how you have a knife and so yeah. sometimes what i'll do is i'll shoot them down and then i'll finish them off with the knife and it actually like chops them up into bits and pieces which is really fun i under like i miss the suplexing as well i totally get why it isn't there because if the suplexes and the kicks are there like that is a different game. Yeah. 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 And then sometimes like if you have a grenade equipped, you can like sacrifice the grenade to put I it in there. I love that. Uh, I, I, I always do it. I, I I never use them as projectiles. I always oh, use them as a backup. My second run, I all I kept them all as projectiles and got through everything so much faster just using grenades. They do crazy yeah, damage. Yeah. Crazy damage. Yeah. So oh, wow. but, um, I like oh I'll eat the damage so I keep my grenade and then when there's a like four of them in a tight space that's them all gone yeah I really like the half hour bit where you play as Sherry and it's a kind of like a game of hide and go seek with a creepy man then you play as Leon and it's a much more like streamlined version of what you've already played um, but Mr. X shows up way earlier like you're just walking down a corridor and he's there and, and you're like brilliant you're just like oh let's do this let's let's add this into the equation very soon okay yeah I always remember in Silent Hill 2 when um Every time Pyramid Head shows up, it's like, you know, big cutscene, big deal. But then, like, in the latter third, the last third of the game, he just starts appearing. Like, he just turned a corner and he's there, and it scares the shit out of you. Um, then I did the uh, bit where you have to play as Ada with the fucking hacker gun. Uh, That's one of the worst things I've ever played in my life. Wow. It's not fun. Um, That's funny because I started Leon because I wanted to play as Ada. But I I love Ada so same. much. I think everyone feels that way. Everyone was really excited to hear that you would be, get to play more as Ada. I really I, I I'm not a big fan of her character in this game. I I, I, I just I um I, I I do like that when it with Claire's game and that who I guess is one of the main villains is portrayed as completely different to with Leon. She's just like because she's more fleshed out in Claire's story, whereas with Leon's. She's just this weird, like, 
on like just just some jerk who you're not sure what the motives are right Mm -hmm. um i like that the bosses reappear but there's there's new versions of them because you know how in like four or five and six there's all these different kinds of bosses and it's just you know this mute this guy's now a mutant blob or these two guys shoot the glowing orange eye yeah (laughs) now he's still in it william birkin but i just love that he keeps coming back Oh, and I said shoot the glowing orange eye. I mean, basically every boss from four on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that hasn't changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I really, really like that Mr. X kind of sticks around for Leon's campaign. I thought that was cool. And it, it, it ends very fun. It, it, it feels like Resident Evil, even though it, like they're going back to basics. It still feels fucking stupid and fun, and I love it. Yeah. It's a great game. It has been an exceptional, exceptional year for games. Guys, what's how we move into our quick time events? Okay, we've adjusted our mics. Do I sound better? I hope so. <laughs> um, so going into our new section of the podcast, Anthem is causing hardware failures on the PS4. It's not breaking them, but it is causing hardware problems. Yeah, people thought they were originally breaking them, and that made for a funnier headline. The publisher came out and said, "Well, no, no, we're not, we're not breaking them. If you actually do a, what was it like, a factory or a data, if you rebuild the database, they're fine." Yeah, and it's just like, why is it doing that? Why is it crashing it that bad? So it was crashing people's consoles to the point where it was kind of the console was acting as if you turned off the power at the wall. It took a few goes to get them started up. I think it bricked one dudes. Still, that Reddit guy was very much no. It's it's bricked. It's oh gone forever. God. But I think generally, it's like you can just rebuild your database and it's fine. But a game should not be able to do that. No, it should not. I actually I saw this story in the docket, and I was like, you know, it'd be funny if if we go through like all the weird like issues that Anthem has had since its release. And so I found a list, and after about ten minutes, I was like, no, this is just gonna take too long. That game's a fucking train wreck! My god! There was like a few hours where there was a loot shower where people were getting drops at a kind of reasonable rate and everyone was really happy, but it turns out that was a bug, so they removed it. And then there was a campaign to put the bug back in because it kind of felt, oh, we were getting things in the loot game. So, you know. That shit about the level one weapons, like... The, the way the game scales, gun. the default gun is more powerful than like the rare weapons. Okay, I don't want to get hyperbolic. How do you guys think Anthem is kind of... Compare Anthem to Fallout 76. Okay. Um, Anthem is more of a game. Yeah, I, like... Like, for like, me, with Anthem. Anthem, it looks nice. It's got cape animation. It's got environments and stuff like that. Like... For me, Fallout 76, like, it, it wasn't just the meta game or the programming. Like, you could look at stills of Fallout 76 and see the things weren't loaded in properly and look bad. Yeah. Like, at, 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 at least with Anthem, the sci-fi is believable. Yeah. That's fair. I'll, what I guess what I would say, though, is, like, I cannot remember a year where two AAA games came out so close together and both had such insane problems. Unrushed, untested. I kind of feel like we've hit a critical limit with developers where they're like, okay, guys, look, we know that we can get away with this much, so what if we push it a little more? And Fallout 76 and Anthem are like, they're the point where it's like, you have you have gone too far. <laughs> they're both games as well, coming from developers that don't usually make that style of game, and it feels like they were making it for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm there's a real big problem with developers thinking we'll patch things later yeah i've I've always felt weird about that because like you've seen that a bunch where developers are like fuck it kick it out the door and we'll just we'll make it good eventually and i think it's a really weird precedent to set like i i don't i i think it's just kind of it's really anti-consumer because you're basically like beta test our game for us and it's like no beta test your own game like make a good product make something you're proud of but um, it's been fascinating watching Anthem kind of keep going. It'll be interesting to see where it is at the end of the year, for sure. Yeah, totally. Nominated for a shit show award, that's for sure. 
Yeah. The main character of Sonic the Hedgehog is unveiled. I specifically phrased the headline this way because this is the main character of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Mm -hmm. Is this Sonic the Hedgehog? This is the blandest, most boring Sonic the Hedgehog imaginable. I, looking at it, I can't even muster the enthusiasm to make fun of it. Uh, yeah. So I, I guess the feedback on this hasn't been very good. I think everyone is taking the piss out of it. Um, so, do 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 you have any like observations or anything that you've kind of noticed? specifically in maybe his hands or his oh like he's not wearing gloves he has his white why just why have white fur just give him the gloves his little hip circles really bother me hip circles he has like weird hip bone joints okay. oh they're very pronounced yeah okay for me it's that he's wearing like nike shoes so he's wearing human shoes right what size is he like it's about sonic in the human world right and he teams up with like a local sheriff and they take down Dr. Eggman, played by Jim Carrey. I think that's the synopsis. God, this film's gonna be Do you weird. think there's gonna be a moment in the in the film where like he goes back to the guy's house? Like, okay, I got it. This is what's gonna happen. The guy's a cop. He's a cop, right? Oh yeah. He hits the hedgehog with his car, puts it in the backseat of his car, and he wakes up and he's all like, whoa. And he's like, oh, you can talk. He brings him home and Sonic tries on his runners. They're his human Nikes. Maybe, well, the, maybe like those runners used to belong to my son. Okay. You're my son, my son. <laughs> I'm totally down with Sonic having to try on a pair of runners because it means that we get to see him without the runners. So I want to see his toes. Don't you have like Sonic Dream Collection for that? Yeah. Yeah. I want to literally a video game. I, I want to see what this film does with Sonic toes. Yeah. It, the design makes me so sad because you know originally that looked kind of nice and then it went through so many boardroom conversations yeah and ev like i'd say he's had like real kind of big cartoony chunky shoes to start off and they were like why are the shoes so big said someone who never <laughs> I saw feel Sonic. Threatened. <laughs> that's that's weird shoes aren't that big make them smaller <laughs> <laughs> Why is he wearing gloves when he's naked? Take the gloves off. Just make his hands white. <laughs> I really like that. Um, they've they've changed his eye from a visor into two separate eyes, but they've tinted the white bit of fur in the gap between his eyes white, that so it still looks like the visor. Bothers me. Yeah, it's like this tiniest strip. Like if you're gonna do it, like put a bigger white patch of fur. Like commit to something. It just seems like so non-committal in every capacity. It's yeah. so unfortunate for the Sonic movie that like its release stuff is coming out around the time that like you know the Pokemon stuff is coming out. The Pokemon movie because like that's just the more I think about the Pokemon movie, the more I'm like, wow, they nailed it. Yeah, they 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 got the weirdness and they're like acknowledging it. Seems like with this, they're kind of... What? There's nothing wrong with it. Looks, looks fine. You're wrong. <laughs> yeah. This, this looks awesome. Yeah. Um, I look forward to the three of us going to see that movie. Um, Pokemon Sword and Shield announced for Switch. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Let's get it out of the way. Which starters do you like? The I, rabbit. I, I, I like the water one because I like amphibians I like the water one because he's depressed okay. I like the little monkey too he's very cute I like them all I think this is the strongest starter set they've had in a very long time I don't like them because I think they all look the same as each other they all have like the same head eyes body shape they def yeah, like they, yeah. They're, all, they're, all, they're all kind of based off a template and like, where they've cute. like they're added all cute, accessories. But I I like them weird. Like Bulbasaur's weird, or like fucking to Totodile. Totodile's so weird. Yeah, Tepig. Cool Tepig's guy. so weird and he's so cool. I mean, yeah, but the rabbit's cool. <laughs> I, I think they're all cool. I just I'd like to see something a bit more different and like. I think the way they do something more different is make the starters not the grass, fire, and water, but they'll never do it. God, why? Like, I was... Yeah. This is uh, a real honestly, safe bet of a this game. This whole trailer, like, this has done absolutely nothing for me. Like, yep, they're making another Pokemon game, 
and that's it. And they're cute, like they are cute. I think I think the trainer designs are really weak. Hopefully you can customize them. Oh, you will. Yeah, you yeah. know you will. But I think they, they look bad and just, I don't know. I watched this trailer at work with a lot of, I, I watched this in a room with 20 people that were all like super excited. And I was like really looking forward to it too because I was, I, was, I, I was very happy for them. People were crying at the end of this. Why? Because <laughs> wow. Because it was what they wanted, and I was like, okay, more Pokemon. But yeah. I feel I feel like any tr- Pokemon trailer would have that effect because this was so yeah. just non-offensive, and oh god, they're using the same 3D models, and they look garbage. They, those 3D models are bad. Like they're so unexpressive. They're so. Every Pokemon just stands there. Like, at least when the Pokemon were sprites, it's like, you know, they'd, they'd like, ha- have these weird stances. And, like, every game, a new sprite looked different. And it was fucking cool and interesting. And you'd be like, oh, I want to catch a Mewtwo or whatever because I want to see how weird Mewtwo looks in this game. In this game, I know Mewtwo is going to have the same 3D model he had last time. And it'll be exactly the same. And, and, and why and even... Why, why do I even get up in the morning? There's no point to anything and the 3d models can definitely pose because they're animated when they attack yeah so they have a rigging system in them they could have them do idle animations i think a yokai watch yeah like the amount of like personality and like the posing of the yokai watch stuff yeah like they always look class they're dancing or they're yawning if they're if nobody's moving dragon quest is the exact same way and it's just but in this, they're just in this like kind of weird breathing in, breathing yeah, out. Yeah, I think Pokemon has gotten so lazy, and this trailer, I think it got so lazy games ago. And I still think, you know, Sun and Moon are cool games, but this trailer it did nothing. I-, I love Pokemon. I care about Pokemon a lot. I want Pokemon to be good again. Um, with this uh, series, they're going to be up to about a thousand Pokemon now, because I think they're at 800 and something. So they're going to get, you know, 100, 100 to 150 new Pokemon. So they're going to reach that 1,000 thousand in the Pokedex, which is pretty fucking crazy. You, you know what? Nuke them all is what I say. Let's let's just start do... Start from just fresh? Start from fresh. Even Chikorita? Especially Chikorita. <gasps> Jesus. I kind of like the setting is kind of in a England, Scotland, Irish kind of looking... Yeah, it's the British this Isles. Time, it's like that's that's interesting and new because like you don't get to see that rendered that often in video games. I don't know. You know where I like my Pokemon game set? Fucking Pokemon Land. Well, they're all. The fake previous- I don't want to go to fake Paris. The previous one was in Hawaii, wasn't it? Yeah. Fake and that, Hawaii. That, that, like, okay, I, I actually did like what they did with that. And I, I I remember black and white. It was fake New York, wasn't it? Or fake America? It's always been a fake place. One was fake Paris. Which one was that? That was X, X and Y. Y. Yeah. A game, I, a game I bought and never took the shrimp, shrink wrap off of. And I've never said it. this before, but I really feel that says, and I hate X and Y. I think that says a lot more about you than it does those games. I have not played a Pokemon. I, I, I The last Pokemon game I bought was in 2012. I, I don't plan to buy this game. I it's I've moved on. I love Pokemon and that's fine. I know they're going to... Every, like, game they introduce, like, some new, like, fighting type that I'm like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And I buy the game for that and I hate myself. Do you think you're going to buy this game? Really? Because, like, it, like it, 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 it's, it's probably out November, November Every time 20, 2019. Po- like, I, I bet we can go back. I, I think Sun and Moon came out not around when we started this podcast. Yeah. And this is how I always have Pokemon games. I'm always super down on them. I'm always like, I want Pokemon to be good again. And then it comes up and they start releasing all the Pokemon designs and I get caught, swept up in the whimsy of it all and like, end up spending 40 euro on a game that makes me sad. Well, now you're going to spend 60 euro because it's a fucking console game as well. Yeah, that was the other thing. Like, way to just not try with the art direction at all. Like, this just, this looks like the plainest thing in the world. The game could look as good as Mario Odyssey or Breath of the Wild and it doesn't. It could! It could! But it doesn't. It doesn't. Because it's fucking Pokemon. It's as big an IP as those two. Yeah. I guess they're just they're scared to do anything with Pokemon because it's such a cash cow. Like, what is it? The most success, successful fictional franchise in the world? Yep. Crazy. But yeah. If people are happy about it, I'm happy for them. But it's it's I, I just find it very difficult to get excited over that trailer. 
Um, moving on, we have Judgment pulled from sales in Japan after a voice actor drug scandal. Brian, take it away. Um, so Judgment, which is or Judge Eyes, uh, came out in Japan recently. It's made by Team Yakuza. That's a Yakuza spin-off in the Yakuza world. Uh, where you're playing a detective. Is that what it is? You're a lawyer. You're, you're an ex-lawyer lawyer who is a detective. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, one of the main characters, he's not the like main main character, but he's one of the like core supporting cast, I guess. Played by uh, an actor called Pierre Tacky, and it's his voice and his motion capture. Uh, the actor was uh, arrested under the suspicion of cocaine use. Uh, I think I think his car was found. His car was found, and he was tested positive for cocaine, and he he's in so much trouble that they uh-huh. are pulling the sales of Judge Eyes or Judgment physically, digitally, and deleting any evidence of the game being promoted on the Sega Twitter. What is happening? Even the website, it's all gone from it too. And the game was supposed to be coming out in Europe on June twenty first. Like that can't be in the West. Like what? What are they doing? Japan has really like. They have zero tolerance like, yeah, towards drugs. drugs. So yeah. like a bag of weed will get you like five years in but jail or something. Millions and millions of dollars went into this game. People's jobs are on the line. I'd say they're kind of like maybe removing it to let it go through its proceedings and then putting it up but kind of trying to limit the connection to it right now I guess so it sure like, seems extreme Yeah, it's I very extreme doubt it would affect the European and American release given our drug laws are not the same no um, and as well it's getting a complete 100% English dub mm. yeah. so and we don't know who Pierre Tacky is generally. I know he also does the voice of Olaf in Frozen. So he, he did the voice of Olaf in the Kingdom Hearts 3 game. Just get someone real non-controversial, like Vic Mignon or whatever. <laughs> I I can't no. believe I can't believe like someone who like like an actor who did some drugs versus like gets in so much shit, whereas like other people who do way worse shit. Yeah. Get away with like just like Get get to be preserved in a game, I guess, yep. or get to be preserved in media. Have their series keep being published, their characters keep appearing in things. It's just it's a really stupid double standard that it it's a dumb rule and they need to fix it. Yeah. Totally. Guys, that's gonna do it for news this week. Pretty light week on news. Yeah. I'm sure more things happen <laughs> somewhere. Um what's how we move into some Emails. Can 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 the listeners hear what's going on outside? What is that? What the fuck is that? It sounds like a bin truck. Oh well. Uh, they're doing roadworks outside, and we record this podcast very late at night. Yeah, um, this is a really good time when people are trying to sleep. is a great time to do roadworks. I think. Yeah, I, I, I think you know, put your kids to sleep. You know, that's when you should start fucking drilling the roads. Yeah. And when you know. Maybe it will stop. So sometimes I, I record like voice stuff, usually around kind of eleven a.m. ish. And sometimes they're like clipping hedges and it means I can't move forward and I get so frustrated and I never do it, but sometimes I get real indignant and I'm like, I should go out down there and tell them that I have voice recording to do. Have you ever tried recording in the bathroom or something or is there too much of an echo? Too much of an echo. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's where we record the next episode beside the washing machine. Brian, what do we got? Okay, we, this first one, uh, Johnny picked this out. This is from Oscar and Oscar asks... Is Blanca a monster? If not, why? No, he's a human. He's a monster. No, he's a human. He's just a regular dude from Brazil, just isn't a regular he? Dude from... <laughs> <laughs> he was a human who was changed into a monster. He got lost when he was little. In the rainforest. Electric eels taught him to use electricity, and he turned green from eating plants. What's the excuse for like all the orange hair everywhere? He's just a ginger. He's a party animal. He's from, like, he just hangs out in Rio, doesn't he? Yeah. He's yeah. just a normal guy. 
Why, is, why are people being mean to Blanket? Neve, what's your problem with Blanket? I don't know why you think it's a negative to be a monster. Everyone loves monsters. People want to fuck them. Wait, I feel like this <laughs> conversation just fucking careened off a cliff. Blank what? is hot. <laughs> Maybe Blank, Blank is hotter as like a beast man. This is your weird devil, hellboy thing. My weird hellboy thing? Loads of people like hellboy. I have, yeah, but you're like, hellboy's so sexy. That's what you said, <laughs> like. I don't think I said that for You me. literally said that. We were having a conversation, and I know because there was two other people there, too. Okay, Hellboy, well, Hellboy makes is me, uh, sexy. Makes my loins. Oh, Neve, I just really like Hellboy. Like, I, like, I want... Neve, you're literally like, I never said that. And then you say it like two seconds later. Well, uh, just like, like uh, I, you, I you have say to that take about this Hellboy. with a pinch of salt. I am like, like not straight. So maybe my definition of what makes a man like hot is kind of a little skewed. But Hellboy seems sexy. Seems sexy. And there you have it, folks. There you have it. <laughs> That's such a lesbian after all. <laughs> <laughs> Hellboy, the fish man from the fish man well, no, movie. The fish, the fish man is straight <laughs> yeah, up. Just the he fish is man. straight up hot. Like, <laughs> like vampires generally, mummies, werewolves. Wait, mummies? <laughs> uh, fucking the, the <laughs> mummies need. Mummies. <laughs> so you would be in there and like the fucking bandages be going everywhere. And once they're gone, you'd be like, this was a giant wait, mistake. Wait, wait, wait. The girl mummy from the Tom Cruise movie, or the bald mummy from the Brendan Fraser ones? Both. Either or. Alright. Like, where's the limit? Like, what are, like, gargoyles, giant spiders? Gargoyles are hot. Like, okay, actually, We no, learned that actually, from the gargoyles no, cartoon. No, yeah, no, yeah. I, I fucked up there. <laughs> there were so many attractive gargoyles in that thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What wow. was his name? Like, Gladios? <sighs> Goliath? Hot Daddy Gargoyle? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I think his name was actually Hot Daddy Gargoyle. Um... I gotta rewatch that show. I read a thing about Blanca before that he doesn't like flying on planes. No, he doesn't. Yeah, but so don't, like, a load of Americans don't like getting on a plane. I, but, like, it's just a thing that he doesn't like flying on planes makes him more relatable. Makes him further away from being a monster. I I, I don't think Blanca's a monster. Yeah. He's just a party animal. Some monsters are very relatable. I, I know some I am looking at a picture of Blanca. That, that's a monster. No, that's a person. You're He's just hunched. Being, you're being racist, Neve. Yeah, that's Again. awful. He's... Very hairy. Awful racist green. straight Neve. Just <laughs> fucking same shit you know about what? Blanca. Lesbian Neve, I'm on board with. This straight Neve, I don't like her at all. Okay, Blanca would fit right in the St. Patrick's Day parade. He could be, he could fucking lead that parade. He'd be oh, brilliant. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, fuck off, Mark Hamill. You weren't that good. You know, we want Blanca. Mark Hamill's in the St. Patrick's Day He was, was last, last year. year last yeah. year, they had Luke Skywalker do it. You know, because all the Ireland and the films. No, yeah, you yeah. know, I get the connection. The nuns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, nuns. He, he just really loves those nuns. I feel like... I feel like Shredder is more a monster than Blanca. No, Shredder's just a man in armor. <laughs> yeah, but the four Teenage Mutant, Mutant Ninja Turtles couldn't beat him. Are the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles monsters? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, they're monsters. Oh, they're teenagers. They're, the, you can be more... You can be a teenage monster. Are Transformers it's monsters? Teenage Wolf. Yeah, absolutely. Transformers. Transformers are monsters. Well, I guess they are more than meets the eye. Because yeah, they're yeah. weird. They're just weird space machines that like copy us. They're awful. No wait, they're aliens. They're not monsters. Yeah. Are monsters and aliens the same thing? Or monsters versus? Okay. No, no, no. Because I feel like a monster. No, if you're from a different planet, you're an alien. Okay. Is the mm -hmm. Grim Reaper a monster? No, it's a spirit. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so demon. okay, so we got ghosts, yeah. We got monsters, and we yeah. got aliens. Well, I think I said spirit, but yeah. Okay, spirits. Because for a ghost, you have to have once been alive. Mm -hmm. Okay, do monsters and spirits overlap at any point? I like, mean, you could be a monster who died and then become a monster ghost. Okay, because like stands or stands yeah. or are they overlap. Okay, because because <laughs> because you know how in Ganto they fight demons, but they're monsters, yeah. But they're yokai, so they're 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 ghosts. But they're also aliens. Yeah. So that's the fucking... Tri that, that's the trifecta right there. Man, you know, I think about Ganso sometimes, and I think that's maybe the greatest film ever made. It's really, really important. I think every child should watch every that movie. Every child should watch Ganso. Neve, have you seen Ganso yet? No. Neve, what are you doing, buddy? I don't know. <laughs> you, have <to> see Gan <laughs> you have to see Ganso. It's really, really important. Uh, dear listener, if you haven't seen Ganso, it's on Netflix. It comes with the John Bryan seal of approval we watched it one night we didn't know what we were getting into 
an incredible movie. I've seen this film eight times. Have you? I watch it every six but months. It's so rewatchable. And like, okay, it's not as good as the manga. It's so close. Yeah. Like, it's so much closer than it should be. <laughs> a very important film. Thank you, Oscar. Fantastic che- email. <laughs> Oscar, you should check out Ganso. Oscar, and, check out Ganso. And, and would if you'd Oscar, if you could send us a list of all the creatures from Ganso and which ones are monsters and which ones are not. We'd really appreciate it. Yeah. Also, we have an email. It's askletsfightaboss at gmail.com. That's askletsfightaboss at gmail.com. Um, we would love more like hypothetical or just quick, wa- Man, quick I, fire I, emails. I, I love... I, I'm a big fan of the old hypotheticals. I love a what if. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, what if John had lobster claws for hands? Ask that. That would be the end of both of you. Yeah. Uh, John wouldn't be able to podcast because he'd be cutting all the cords and... Well, you know that. What a scenario <laughs> that is. That's, that's so a bad. real. That's a real yuck fest there. I remember. I I always loved that email we got at Christmas, which was like, which video game characters would you have for Christmas dinner? <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Brian, what else we got? Uh, this one is from Lucas, and Lucas uh, asks, uh, Do you three have any advice on staying productive while working from home, and also maintaining a healthy work-life balance? John, I guess this is mostly directed at you because you're the entrepreneur, self-made man, yeah, that's anime a, YouTuber. That's that's one way to put it. Who makes the best damn videos on the internet from from a bedroom. Yeah, like in Kalmanum at least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think working at home is has a lot of advantages. I feel the longer you do it, the more disadvantages it has, and you have to get like very active about com- combating them, because I think it can really drive you insane. Um, do not work from your bedroom at all. Do whatever you have to do not to do that, because that's a bad idea. It's really important, like I think, to take the initiative a lot of times, and like you know, like ask to meet up with friends, make an effort to hang out with them, any social opportunity you can get because social interactions become a finite resource like you don't you don't you're not automatically going to talk to someone in a day you know like you might you might talk to your partner or whatever but even that it's like you have to be you have to like and and i'm not someone who like enjoyed small talk or even enjoyed social interactions a lot but after about a year of working for myself it started getting like to the point where i really had to try and meet up with people um i would also really suggest like taking a class in something which is cool because like you know whatever skill you've always wanted to learn or whatever you've always wanted to kind of become interested in you now have a really good excuse to go do that um and that has been like i only really started doing that like in the last couple of months and that has been a real godsend for me in terms of like you know just mental health stuff and like keeping perspective on like that your job isn't everything because when you do work for yourself your job just eclipses everything else because it's all you have to really validate yourself and so i think it's really important to find interests that you know take you out of that and make you remember there's kind of life outside of what you do and um yeah i think it's a really good excuse to just get proactive in your life and follow up kind of interests and just you know call up friends you haven't seen for a while make more effort with the friends you have and just like you know take any opportunity you can get because otherwise like you know you can sometimes find yourself going seven days with like out really doing anything and i think i don't think people are meant to live like that you know i think people people are meant to mix around at least a little and that's super important so yeah i would i would definitely try that stuff would you, you guys have both worked at home from at different yeah. points in yeah. your lives. I took a almost year hiatus in which I made a short film at a desk in the room I was sleeping in. So I would crawl out of bed and crawl over to a desk. And that's not healthy. No, no if you can put your desk in any other room that you work from, you should try that. Yeah. Or, or even get a separator. Like if you have a small space, like going to Argos... You don't have Argos wherever you are. Going to IKEA, <laughs> yeah, IKEA and getting some kind of room divider or something that even fold, folds up just to give that mental separation of like, this is where I sleep and this is where I work because um, it'll be easier to keep hours that way. Yeah. 
keeping hours is very important as well mm -hmm. like everyone's got to crunch you know some time but i think it's very important to keep like a very strict like this is the time i quit yeah this is my lunch time and make sure you keep yourself fed because it's like sometimes you forget to eat when you don't have a very defined lunch by everyone's leaving for lunch yep. you know yeah and just every two hours on the dot mm -hmm. just do it or, or you know like how normal people eat but wait no <laughs> normal people eat like that um keeping a snack on your desk can be healthy helpful like nuts a fillet seeds, of chicken a fillet of chicken just a trough mm -hmm. <laughs> next to your desk mm -hmm. if you're john call in some supermax um, never never a bad idea i always think it's helpful as well to write down the tasks you want to do for a day like make a list and check them off just because yeah. things can get very segmented when you don't when the person making sure things are done are, are you is you yeah like it's hard to lose track of things even though you know they're all in your head but once you start to list them out, it just makes it so much easier to kind of pinpoint them, do them and check them off. Yeah. Um, and like, I, I don't know if this person is like working completely off their own bat, but get used to getting like 80% of the things you want done, done. Because it's so rare that you get 100% done. And I think a dangerous habit to fall into is like, you don't get everything you want to get done done and then you move the remaining 20 percent over to the next day so now you have to get 120 percent done but you're not going to get that done either and that can very quickly make it feel like you know your projects are like falling apart when they're not really because like we always overestimate how much we can do it's in like the realms of like a healthy working day so just you know if you get 80 percent done that's like that's good enough go enjoy your time off and don't worry about it yeah, the person, Lucas, who sent the email is a writer, so there's definitely a lot of overlap. If you're a writer, all this stuff is especially important because I find, like, writing goes to shit when your mental health suffers mm -hmm. and working at home is bad for your mental health, I think. Yeah, and try and keep, again, try and keep that separation between this is my work time and this is my off time, and even if you have a great idea in bed, I don't know, keep a journal next to it that you can write down something, but don't bring your work to bed, yeah. you know? Yeah, save it for work mode. Good luck. Lucas, best of luck. Thank you, Lucas. And then this last one is from uh, Nadim. And it's about art college. I guess animation art college and Osama Tezuka, <laughs> which is a, an interesting one. Uh, I wanted to ask if Osama Tezuka was part of your syllabus in art college. If so, were you taught how to cut corners in animation using the techniques he and his company founded? Did your professors or peers have a negative impression on him creating cheaper animation? No, I don't think he, I don't think our tutors yeah. would have known who Tezuka was. No, so we all went to the same animation college. Uh, this this person also asks about do we like Osama Tezuka, which we can get to in a bit. Mm -hmm. I guess when anime was brought up in our college, it was as a negative. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. Don't draw like that because that's how they draw on the other side of the world and you're not applying for a job on the other side of the world. You're applying for a job in the West. I think there was so also, draw Western style. I think there was also an element of it though where it's like so many anime designs are very detailed and they wanted to teach us animation as opposed to like illustration. Yeah. And I think that's a problem because a lot of people going into animation confuse the two. Yeah. As for cutting corners, that was definitely encouraged but not outright said i know some of our tutors fucking love chuck jones and disney animation and stuff like that and would only like you to be you know a technically on point drafts person mm -hmm. who can replicate a, a daffy duck pose yeah on the spot but i think cutting corners with upa style animation is totally a route you need to go down when you're a student who has two months to make an animated short film. If you're interested in storytelling, that then it's kind of a must. Like, me and you, Brian, we were doing like five, six minute films a lot of the time. Too long. And the only, yeah, they were too long. But the only way we were getting them done is we were using all these like time effective techniques. Yeah, a lot of reuse. Yeah. Like, what one of the best grad films I've seen is the pilot for the Powerpuff Girls done by Craig McCracken called the Whoop-Ass Girls that ended up becoming the show but it was all done because it was possible on a, a zero budget with a small staff mm. and that's why the TV show got, ma got made afterwards but 
it's using limited animation techniques and zero like very very low effort designs but like like they, they are good designs but then mm. they don't need to be pushed that much like limited animation doesn't mean inferior animation like it's just a style of animation but i think when you go to a very traditional way of being taught it it is very like frame based it is very disney based it is kind of you get a talented animator working economically that to me is one of my favorite things where it's like oh i they like held the drawing for like six frames mm. here and they rotated it to keep the momentum going and then they did like i love that stuff um you know I, you can't measure animations by the amount of drawing something has yeah and i think if, if you hear someone like, doing that's that, the richard williams way of doing it yeah and that's teeth in the cobbler in a film that never got made yes you know what it's not that good a film no that film is like the most tunneling kind of film where because it because like the film is animated on one so there's like 25 drawings every second mm -hmm. and it just got lost in its own ambition yeah looks amazing parts of it look amazing yeah but also like a general audience would not have given a shit no but um, yeah, you know, I think animation can be a lot of different things, and you know, it's it's art. It's about expression. It's about conveying an emotion or a feeling or whatever. And that, to me, always takes precedence over like how many drawings something has or how you know lavish the animation is. One of my favorite things is when an animator takes a show and they're just like, okay, I'm directing this episode. It's going to look the way I want it to look. It's so one episode of. Um, what, Space Dandy? Yu Yu Hakusho. Yu Yu Hakusho. That uh, Shimbo directed. Yeah. And the drawings are completely different from the rest of the show, even the other episodes he directed. And they're beautiful. They're just soft and floppy and sad. But it's like, it's a really sad episode. Like a major character just died and everyone's so depressed. And so it just works amazingly. So, yeah. 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 Hope that helps. Yeah, I, 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 I think with any college course, especially our college, like a lot of it is you discovering these techniques on your own because like the tutors just give you the coursework to do. Yeah. And they go, all right, so that's up to you. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Yeah. I think like with something like animation as well, you know, decide the kind of shit you want to do and then learn it yourself. Like the resources online, like God, YouTube wasn't even like that big a thing when we were in college. No. Now you can learn everything. So just... Just go for it. Like, yeah, if there's something you like, go through it frame by frame. It's, it's a great way of learning. Yeah, totally. Uh, and then just about Tezuka in general. Do, do you guys ever read anything written by Tezuka? Yeah, I read uh, the Buddha thing he did. Yeah. Um, I don't remember a lot of it now, but I remember like really enjoying it and being surprised at him, which I enjoyed it. I really like Astro Boy. The... I think Astro Boy is so charming. Yeah, I fucking love Omega Factor, that Game Boy Advance game. That's so cool. Done yeah. by Treasure, I think. Yep. Um, Gunstar my, Heroes. My favorite, Tezuka, is probably The Book of Human Insects, which is such a fucking good name. Um, it's more of a, more one of his seinen stories, I guess, because like he did all kind of genres of manga for all different age, for for all different age groups, and this is kind of more veered towards an older audience he's a really interesting guy and he... I like I liked his drawings I like the sexy mice yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah because he, he was one of the first furries wasn't he I mean I, I guess so was he yeah yeah do you not remember do you not see that thing it came out like a it... couple of years ago they found a bunch of his old drawings and he had drawn like like attractive snake people huh yeah. They're, they're really good drawings. He also didn't originally want to be a mangaka. He wanted to be a gynecologist. Yeah, and it's like... And that was his dream. Yeah. Uh, but it didn't work out, so he just started doing cartoons. And his and now work they... rate was like... Like, it didn't make sense. Like, he was... He, he wrote so many mangas, and he did them in crazy short spaces of time. Yeah. And it's real stream of consciousness stuff as well, but it's 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 it's. Fun. Yeah, it's the only one I've really read is the Twin Knights one. Princess Knight. Yeah. They're good. They're very very cute. I've got it's them up really there in the bookshelf. Really pretty drawings. Yeah. 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 Really 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 important person, I guess, in manga and in anime. Yeah. What, what, like, is, don't they call him the God of Manga? The Godfather of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The grandfather. I don't know. Yeah. Some sort of. 
older Some man. Some well-deserved old man term. Yeah. So there you go. And yeah. I, I, I like the photos of him. He's got a nice hat and he's got a good smile. He does. And they named an award after him and it's cool. Manga. I like manga. I like manga. Do you guys prefer manga or anime? Starting for manga. I find a lot of weird shit in manga. Yeah, exactly. Like, I like to go to a manga website find the weirdest stuff I can. Yeah, because, like, sometimes you're reading something you're like, there's no way they could broadcast this shit. Yep. Especially some of the stuff that happens in Gantz. Like, Gantz O is a fucking fluke. Yeah. Because the fucking shit that's in the manga. Gantz O is a fluke. Yeah. But even then, there was stuff in that arc they were just like, no, let's just, let's just not. Let, no. Um, I have one volume left of Billy Bat. That's a weird fucking manga, and I don't know how they could ever adapt that into a series, because it's just... It's so fucking convoluted as well, like it, it uh, and it's so meta about being a manga. It it, it it just works as a manga. Do you remember that Satoshi Kone one you got me a while ago? You got it for my birthday. Yeah, it's but it's about him writing a manga. Yeah. Or no, it's about an author writing a manga, but then it becomes about Satoshi Kone writing a manga, and then it becomes about Satoshi Kone not having time to finish his manga because he's making Perfect Blue. And as that happens, the drawings become like pencil drawings and then really rough pencil draw. It's so oh, weird. cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. That's it for emails. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Guys, let's say we do some Patreon shout outs. Brian. Yeah. I would like to contribute to the Let's Fight a Boss Patreon. How do I do that? <laughs> well, my friend. You open up your old browser. Right. You go patreon.com. Yeah. Uh-huh. But here's the catch. Okay, because I'm at patreon.com. I don't see anything about Let's Fight a Boss here. Like, I feel like I'm wasting my time. You go forward slash LFAB. Oh, okay. And that's the Let's Fight a Boss Patreon page. Oh, whoa, okay. And there, you give give us your money. Okay. <laughs> and I'll get nothing in return for that. You'll get the feeling of satisfaction finally um a digital hug <gasps> and what exists of the black tapes which is kind of just, just everything we don't deem good enough to <laughs> 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 that's what I I, I, there's like there's like 15 20 episodes maybe yeah. of like uh, our old that's why the boss stuff from like if you you know every now and then although you know what We've been we've been around so long now. We get way less questions about the black tapes because no one goes back that far. I think episode thirty is the first listed episode. Of Let's fight a boss. We just took the others down. Honestly, for a reason I don't really remember anymore. I think I was worried that people would find out where we live or something. We just said where we lived. Yeah, we were just pretty openly candid <laughs> about yeah, personal it, it, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think I think we were. I, yeah. I, I, I think we were giving out our phone numbers. You know how it yeah, is. Yeah, you know how it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess you you are funding uh, a better production quality, uh, as you can hear from this episode. It's... Yeah, you get access to the mm-hmm. Discord, <laughs> and you also get a special shout out. That's right. Uh, if you're a member of the Discord, you get to type in whatever you want. We have to fucking say it. Yep. So here you go. It would probably sound like this. Uh, this one is from Mass, and it's. Let's fight a boss, where the boss is the inner demon we fight on a daily basis, and the loot drops are pieces of media that allow us to ignore the demons. Amen, brother. Uh, this one from Cogs. Titus is the best character in Final Fantasy X, and John is a dummy. Guys, did we not vet these before we let them go online? Okay, it can't be that bad. This is painful for me, but Krantek says, Titus is the worst character in Final Fantasy X, and John is a smarty. Krantek, me and you have always been, like, on the level. Like, I've always known there was a connection there, and this just proves it. Krantek, you just disappoint me greatly, and Cogs, you're you're just a cool guy. I, I, Cogs actually got banned from the Discord recently. Okay, sorry, Cogs. <laughs> actually, speaking directly to the guys who are on the Discord, uh, and if you're not on the Discord, don't listen to this bit. Uh, if, we'd actually really appreciate if you'd mute the podcast for a couple of seconds because this isn't this isn't for everyone's ears. Yeah. Um, give us more shout outs and give us like <laughs> like they have to be funny. If they're not funny, don't type it on the internet. Only jokes are allowed on the internet. That's how it works, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Happy yeah. stuff, smiles for everyone, no sad things ever on the internet. 
Tell us who your favorite character is and what imaginary food you think they eat. What kind of tails would we have? Oh, oof. I often think if we've tails, what way would humans like change them up in a weird like you know would we pierce them would we split them down the middle like people do with, with their tongues like you know the way like cause we're just oh, into people. modifying shit yeah. so much but there are people who would dock them as like kind of a religious thing people you know what the fuck would we do because we're really weird about that shit people like getting something and just like butchering it and you know just like like would women shave all the hair off their tail <laughs> would the tail be here hairy in the first place would it have long hair or short hair what would, would the tail just, be used for would it be like a like a lion's you know, like, tail like 30 would it be seconds like a, ago i was like john don't let them go down this fucking alley don't let them start talking about tails would it wag when we were happy <laughs> i think it would yeah would it just like go straight up when we were scared? I, I think it'd be so funny if someone like beeped their car and their tails would just be like, oh. <laughs> anyway, You guys say I'm the fucking furry. <laughs> uh, we're all a little furry. We got a yiff, somethings. <sighs> oh, God. Okay. Loot drop. Okay, I will go first. I got um, a new channel that was recommended to me recently and it's called Atrocity Guide and i really really enjoy this channel i've watched like every video they've done and all it is is a spooky channel about weird shit from the internet but also sometimes weird shit from history um oh i think i watched one of these episodes same it was the doomsday about, cult one yeah I, think. I didn't watch doomsday I, I think i watched one about the japanese tv star yeah who who had to win the the mail-in competitions yeah this is he one was of those naked. channels that recently like won the algorithm algorithm yeah. lottery um and it's just getting recommended to everyone and it is very deserved because this channel is fantastic it's like it's just really weird and cool but my favorite episode is called the filmerillion <laughs> in which um, <laughs> what the fuck so this is about a 4chan user called phil who um basically just makes posts on sports boards and his posts must have been very good because it's actually about another user who falls kind of in love with him and makes collages of his posts and like uploads them and it gets problematic when one day this person who uploading these like uh, collages is like hey guys my parents found my collection so I'm not allowed to come on 4chan anymore but I am going to upload this PDF document that I call the film Aurelian, and it is <laughs> gigabytes and gigabytes of different fiction based around this Phil character who this other character is very clearly in love with. He's like built shitty 3D models of like houses out of like Phil's posts. He's done fan fiction about or they've done fan fiction about phil and them robbing a bank and it gets so weird and so creepy and it's a great video and i really really like this channel so you should check them out their mexican death cult and one video is really good as well enjoy everybody uh, my one is jenny nicholson's this is definitely not a published raylo fanfic novel oh, oh that's like an hour and a half isn't it yeah an hour and 43 minutes and it's jenny nicholson going through a book that is very very thinly fa- veiled uh star wars fan fiction raylo specifically and she just basically reads the whole thing but intercuts it with moments from the series that is just lifted from and it's just so specific and it's just really interesting look at stuff that gets published first off because like Jenny always goes into the the author at the end of these kind of things how do they get published just the people like it's really funny just to go to this book on Amazon and read the reviews because it's just a a bunch of horny moms really into this (laughs) horny moms 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 are so horny (laughs) they're just like really really fund a lot of industries um but it's just like a really funny like two nearly two hours video to kill kill some time with just some classic jenny nicholson reading something terrible (laughs) she's great excellent uh mine is the totally spies movie on youtube nice sure okay 
this is so fucking cool. All of Totally Spies is on YouTube. Totally Spies has a YouTube channel, and they have uploaded full episodes. That's crazy. And they have full seasons, you know, teasers, shorts, and the movie. And the movie looks fucking awesome. Like, it looks... Like, it's, it's way more polished than the TV series. It looks great, and it's, it's fun. I love Totally Spies. But I just think it's cool that, like, a TV show that is no longer airing, instead of, like, you know, archiving-ish... It's all up on YouTube to watch. It's yeah, such than, a good idea. Rather than trying to do like some exclusive Blu-ray release or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. And like kids are kids get to just watch it, so do adult men over thirty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're 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 all very Everybody. happy. Yeah. I, I really like Totally Spies. I Sam, Alex, and Clover, they're they're three very important girls in my life. Which one's your favorite? Clover. Why is that? She just wants to have fun. I'm definitely the clover of the group. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Sam. <laughs> nah, John's Sam. You're Alex. Do you think? Yeah. Which, wait, what's, what's Sam? I don't know. It's just how I feel. I see. Guys, thank you for joining us today. To episode 95 my episode my last 95. my last episode yeah. brian it's been great having you like it, it's been it's been it's been wild man yeah um it, it like it i it really sucks that like we are kind of losing you at this point but like that master sword comment like yeah you know we have to maintain some level of credibility with this with this podcast it's okay i'm sure i'll i, I might do a different podcast next time yeah, you have a non-compete clause that makes that impossible for the next <laughs> okay. 825 years so who's going to replace me? No one. It's just going to be all John, all Neve all the time. You're not going to have a third person. I would make it like a, like a dog or something. What do you think, Yeah, Neve? definitely a dog. Yeah. <laughs>